What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we'll be taking a look at the Nomergon pet battle dungeon that was introduced in 8.1. Just like the Deadmines in Wailing Caverns 1, this is the same setup where you face a bunch of boss pets in an order until you reach the final boss pet. So I'm going to tell you, the team, or teams I should say, that I used to defeat this pet battle dungeon. Now first off, you want to enter the Nomergon area, and you'll come across the NPC Micro Zoo X, who allows you to queue for this pet battle dungeon, and sells you pet battle items with currency that you can only get from this pet battle dungeon. As far as the team I used, I tried going for a single team to clear most of the dungeon, but there were times I had to use different teams in different scenarios. But anyways, I mostly used Icky with the Savage Talons, Black Claw, and Flock abilities, then the Zandalari Ankle Ren with the Hunting Party, Primal Cry, and Black Claw abilities, and then finally the Blood Gazer Hatchling with Savage Talon, Falca Swarm, and Predator Strike. Now if you don't have those pets, don't worry, but I would highly recommend getting them because it's a good team with taking out a single enemy. Now I also used a Dire Beak Hatchling at a couple points with Falcus or Swarm, Iron Skin, and Predatory Strike. And then another instance where I used a full human team, which was Grumpling with Snowball, Frost Shock, and Deep Freeze, Crusher with Crush, Shell Armor and Body Slam, and then a new Basath Idol with Crush, Sandstorm, and Rupture. Another very good team. But if you think you have a very good aquatic team, then you can use that since so the team I used the all humans against was an all elemental team. Also, you'll want to make sure you bring at least 10 battle pet bandages before you start. Now, just one last thing to note. Obviously, there are other pets that could be used in this dungeon. These are just what I used. So if you use any different pets, feel free to leave it in the comments below to help others out. But anyways, let's get started. You'll talk to Microzoo X to get teleported into the instance. Then the first enemy you face is the prototype Anoyatron, who is a mechanical pet and just takes 50% reduced damage since he's a boss pet. He'll put this annoying shield around himself at the start, even if your pet is faster, he still does it first, and that lasts a turn. So I just use Black Claw even though it won't do anything. His shield would then be down, so I would use Black Claw so he would take more damage from my flock abilities. Then the next turn I would use Flock. Now he hit me and brought me down to 27 health, so hopefully that happens to you, but if not, then it's not a big deal, otherwise Flock will continue for another turn, doing a lot of damage to him since he now has Shattered Defense on him. Then he uses the Annoying Shield and just wait for him to take out Icky. Zandalari Ankle Render comes in, Black Claw on your first turn, and then follow that with a hunting party. He then hits you which will bring you below 50% for your beast special effect and your hunting party will continue almost taking him out. Maybe if you're lucky with crits then it will take him out. He then brought me down to 13 health at which point I used Primal Cry although it doesn't matter since he put on an annoying shield. He then killed my pet and I brought on my blood gazer hatchling. Now since he's a mechanical pet he'll get res to 20% health once dead so I used Falcosaur Swarm which brought him very low then it continued and took him out resing him to 20% so I finished him off with predatory strike. And that's how you take out the first boss pet. Now once that's over you want to walk over to this teleporter and click on it and you'll go to the next area. So this area you have three elemental battle pets to worry about. They don't take less damage but they do have back pets which seems to actually be random what back pets that they have. So starting off with this green one the living sludge we're going to go with the same team as before. We're going to start off with the black claw like normal and then flock. Luckily this thing's ability is weak against flying, but Flock will continue and take him out. And then a green sludge thing will land on Icky, almost taking it out, but not quite. Now the next pet used Scorched Earth which almost took Icky out, but not quite. If it doesn't take yours out, then use Flock. Then take out your Ankle Render and go with Black Claw. Then Hunting Party will take the pet out, res it to 20% since it's mechanical and will actually take it out completely. Then the third pet I faced was a Cockroach, so I used Hunting Party, it thought it was a good idea to use Greater Apocalypse, so sure I guess, then I used Primal Cry. And now this is the problem with this pet, the Zandalari Ankle Render. I then used Black Claw, but since Hunting Party and Primal Cry have a cooldown, there's nothing left I can do besides reapply Black Claw. So I reapplied it another two times, and Scorched Earth just took me out. Then with the Hatchling, I used Falcosaur Swarm, it continued, and I won. Now heal your pets and go over to the Living Permafrost Elemental. So I used the same team. I would start off with Black Claw, then it would put this blistering cold thing on me, which was a bit annoying, but I just powered through it and used Flock. Flock continued, then it went again and took out the Permafrost pet. Then I had two cockroaches to deal with, which wasn't a problem. I used Black Claw, Flock, Flock continued, Flock continued, and the cockroach was dead. Next cockroach. 
Black Claw before I died. It used Greater Apocalypse, which was nice for me because this means that I get to get a flock in. Then flock continued and then he took me out with a swarm ability. Then I brought out my Zandalari Ankle Render, used Hunting Party, which took him out. Now on to this living Napalm, which was a bit tricky for me. This was actually the first team that took out my team, and this mainly had to do with the back pets it had. So anyways, the game gave it two mechanical back pets, which would just demolish my Zandalari Ankle Render. So this is when I swapped it out with my Dire Beak Hatchling that had Falcosaur Swarm, Iron Skin, and Predatory Thirst. Although when I went to battle the living Napalm again, I noticed that the back pet switched, and now there's an undead rat there. But regardless, I still completed it with this Team. So I was starting off with the Black Claw, of course, then Flock, then Flock continued and took out the Living Napalm. Then the Leper Rat came out and Flock continued. Then it really doesn't matter what you use because you'll die. And then I brought out my Dire Beak Hatchling and used Predatory Thirst, hoping to take it out since it had the Shattered Defense debuff, but not quite. Then I applied Iron Skin, so it wouldn't really hurt me in its final breaths. Then Falcosaur Swarm. Then it continued, bringing the rat into its extra life since it's undead. Just use Falcosaur Swarm again and it'll continue on to the last pet. Iron Skin so you take little to no damage for a couple turns and Predatory Thirst to deal a ton of damage due to Shatter Defense. And that brought the enemy into its final life since it's a mechanical. Then Falcosaur Swarm to finally take it out. And there's the three elementals. Now, on to stage 3. The next boss, which was actually my first hurdle, I mean, unless you count the living napalm as a hurdle. So I of course went back to my original team, but that actually didn't work. I then swapped to an all aquatic team, since this team you're facing is all elemental, but that didn't seem to work out. Although I admit, looking back at my all aquatic team, it wasn't very good anyways. And as I mentioned at the start, if you think you have a good aquatic team, then go for that. But I managed to get it with my Anubisath Idol, Crusher, and Grumpling. Well, not my first attempt with it anyways. I then did a second attempt where I started off with my Grumpling, and that seemed to work better. Anyways, I started off with Frost Shock to slow the enemy and allow me to stun it in the next turn. I then used Deep Freeze, which stunned the Napalm Carrier Pet, so they switched out to the Freeze Ray Robot, so I threw a Snowball at it. Then another Snowball. Then I went for Frost Shock to slow it, then another Snowball. Now its ability brought my Grumpling very low, which was very lucky for me, because that allowed me to deep freeze, which stunned the Freeze Ray Robot. But then the giant Ice Ball thing it used landed on me, which took out my Grumpling, which was actually perfect, because I'd rather finish off my Grumpling than hit another high healed pet I have. So then I brought out my Crusher, which I don't know if I've said this yet, but these are like my three favorite human pets. I'd highly suggest getting them. But with my Crusher, I started off with Body Slam because I wanted to take out this Freeze Ray pet. Even though Body Slam hurts me without my shield ability up, I then forgot that they actually swapped out on stuns, so now the Napalm Carrier is back out. So I'd actually suggest using Shell Armor back there instead of Body Slam so you take less damage from Scorched Earth. And then use Body Slam when you can, and then use Crush as a filler. Then the Napalm Carrier is dead, so now the Freeze Ray comes back. Body Slam if you can, otherwise Crush. And keep doing it like that until Crusher dies, which I was able to take out the Freeze Ray Robot with. Now my last pet, against its last pet, the Sludge Disposal Unit. Start off with Rupture, if you manage to stun it, then GG, you will win, because I didn't stun it and it was still close at the end. Anyways, then use Sandstorm and keep using Crush as a filler, then Rupture when it comes off cooldown. Now, I was at low health, but luckily he was in a phase where he just wanted to dot me and do slight damage, because Sandstorm actually will reduce its damage, so I was able to take him out with Crush. It was close though. Now for stage 4, you're onto a minigame inside of this pet battle dungeon. You jump into this Bomb Crusher 5000 and traverse this hallway without dying. That involves not just running into the bombs and almost dying like I am, but press your 2 ability to activate a shield to not get hurt by the bombs. And then 1 will make you go faster. When your shield runs out, which is after only like a few seconds, wait for it to come back up and get all the way past the bombs. Now for stage 5, you have 2 easy pets to deal with. So we went back to the first team. Icky, Ankle Render, and Bloodgazer Hatchling. Start off with Black Claw like always, then Flock, Flock continues, Flock continues again, and then the Cockroach is dead. Black Claw on the Leopard Rat, then Flock, and then uses an ability which luckily doesn't kill me but brings me to 21 health, and Flock continues taking out the Leopard Rat pet. So I brought out my Ankle Render. The Leopard Rat was on its extra life, so I used Primal Cry. The Drilling Machine then came out, so I used Black Claw, and then Hunting Party. It dodged my next Hunting Party and took out my Ankle Render. With my Hatchling, I used Falcosaur Swarm, and then continued. I then used Savage Talons and Predatory Thirst to fully take it out. Healed then back up and then went to the Leopard Rat pet. Started off with Black Claw, like always, then Flock. Flock continued, which brought the Leopard Rat into its extra life, at which point it took out Icky. Now I actually swapped my Bloodgazer Hatchling since I saw a mechanical pet was about to come out, which wouldn't be good for my Ankle Render. 
So I started off with Falcosaur Swarm, it decided to use some ability which increased its crit, but then Swarm continued. I then used Predatory Thirst to knock the mechanical pet into its rising phase. It luckily missed with its rocket, since that ability that it used to increase its crit also reduced its hit chance. So I then finished it off with a Falcosaur Swarm, and then it continued for the Leperat. Used it again for the Leperat, and continued, and then the Leperat took out my Hatchling. With my Ankle Render, I used my Hunting Party, which finished off the Rat, and now for my next hurdle. Stage 6. Before you go to the final area of the dungeon, there's a giant leper rat that you have to take out. Now the interesting thing about this bloated leper rat is not only does it take 50% less damage for being a boss pet, but it also has leprosy. Meaning that when it dies, whatever active pet you have out will also automatically die. Magic pets, mechanicals, and undead pets are not immune to this. Also using some invulnerability ability does not make you immune, trust me. I tried. Now what this means is you actually have to two pet this boss, since if it dies at the same time as your team dying, it still counts as a loss for you. So after trying many teams, I was able to get it down with the second team we used, Icky, Dire Beak Hatchling, and Bloodgazer Hatchling. You do want a pet that can put a big damage reduction on itself like the Dire Beak Hatchling's Iron Skin. So starting off with Icky, of course Black Claw, then use Flock. Flock continues. Flock continues once more. Now use whatever since it will most likely take you out, but it's at half health now. So that's good. Now bring out the Bloodgazer Hatchling, use Predatory Thirst to get a big hit on it since it has Shatter Defense still on it. Now actually switch to your Dire Beak Hatchling, use Iron Skin, and this is very key for it to do very little damage to you. Also make sure the Leperonome can't heal for a couple turns. Then use Falcosaur Swarm. This is to get the Shatter Defense debuff on it. Falcosaur Swarm continues. Then finally Predatory Thirst and I was able to hit it with a whopping 1300 something. But we still need to survive two more attacks, so hopefully on its extra life, it won't take out your Dire Beak Hatchling, but once it dies, Leprosy will take effect and your Dire Beak Hatchling will die. So there's that. Now before the final boss, Stage 7. You have three more mechanical pets approach you. We're almost done. Now go back to your first team. Icky, Ankle Render, and Bloodgazer. Fight the Guard Dog. Start with Black Claw, then Flock. Flock continues, knocks the guard dog to its resurrect phase, and still actually takes it out in the same flock. Flock continues against the Leperat, Black Claw, Flock again, but it crit and took out my Eki. So if you manage to get a flock off, then that's good. Bring out the Ankle Render and Hunting Party. Hunting Party continues, knocks the rat to its extra life, then just Black Claw cause why not. Against this robot chicken, will Black Claw, then use Primal Cry. Then you can only use Black Claw. Now luckily its missile missed me since he used that crit thing that reduced its hit chance, so I used Hunting Party, and then knocked the chicken to its 20% health phase. But then the missile took me out. So I finished it off with my Blood Gazer by hitting it with a Predatory Thirst, doing a whopping 2114. Now move on to the Nomergon Guard Mechano Strider. Black Claw, Flock, Flock continues, then Flock continues again, taking it out. Black Claw against this next pet and it will take out your Icky. Then I took out my Blood Gazer Hatchling since I was facing a mechanical pet. Start off with Falcosaur Swarm, it continues, then use Savage Challenge, then finish it with Predatory Thirst. Then a Cockroach was the third pet, so use Falcosaur Swarm, it continues, then I would actually advise to use Savage Challenge until your Hatchling dies since Falcosaur Swarm will do very little damage. Now with the Ankle Render, I would actually suggest doing Black Claw and then Hunting Party looking back on it, I didn't exactly do that, then use Primal Cry when Hunting Party is over and you're kind of stuck using Black Claw until you can use Hunting Party again to take out the Cockroach. Heal your pets and now move on to the Guard Tiger. Black Claw like always, then Flock like always. Flock continues, Flock continues, but he actually uses Feign Death so you don't actually hurt him. When Cockroach comes out, use Black Claw, use Flock, Flock continues, Flock continues again taking out the Cockroach. Now back to the Tiger, just use Flock, it will then continue taking out the Guard Tiger. It will then continue on to the third pet. If you haven't noticed already, Icky almost solos this entire team. Use Black Claw, and now he almost takes out my Icky, believes me with 16 health, so I'm able to flock, bringing the spider tank into its 20% phase. But then Icky dies, so I bring out the Bloodgazer Hatchling, use Predatory Thirst, and hit it with 2127. Now, on to the final phase. A shadowy figure appears, which similarly happened in the Deadmines and Wailing Caverns pet battle dungeons. He will then talk to you and do some RP, which lasts a minute, until you phase the Pulverizer Bot Mach 6001. Now, we're actually going to be using the same team, and I luckily beat it on my first attempt, although it was very close. Now, the special thing with this boss is not only does it take 50% less damage for being a boss, but it will actually heal to full once it dies. So you actually have to take it out twice, but it has no back pets. 
So with Icky, use Black Claw like always, but it will do an ability to bring out your second pet. So I brought out my Ankle Render. Use Hunting Party, it uses a mechanical ability to wreck my Ankle Render, so maybe the Diary Catchling isn't such a bad idea. When the Hunting Party continues, it will knock the Pulverizer bot into its 20% phase, and then do whatever because it will kill you anyways. Bring back out Icky and use Black Claw, then Flock, and now this will kill the boss pet, but it will resurrect with full health. Now when it does this, it essentially gains a buff for the rest of the fight which will deal 22 aquatic damage to your active pet, and has a chance to deal more damage, and will also deal 25% more damage, period. Icky dies, Bloodgazer Hatchling comes out, use Falcosaur Swarm, it continues and kills the Pulverizer bot with 70 HP left on my Hatchling. And there it is, that's the end. Microzoo X will come out and you can talk to him to safely be ported out of the dungeon. And then complete the quest and it allows you a port to the Nomergon dungeon plus a level 25 pet battle stone. Now he offers you a weekly to do it all again, to acquire the actual currency to purchase some battle pets from him. Now for the things he sells. You'll sell an unopened Nomergon supply box, which you want to spend excess currency on, which is a chance to give you things like battle pet bandages, polished pet charms, and leveling stones. And then a mechanical cockroach, and an engineering schematic, Mechantula, which creates the Mechantula pet. All of those are one pristine gizmo, then a leper rat tail for two pristine gizmos, and a rechargeable Alarma Dog battery for three pristine gizmos. And there you have it, the entire Nomergon pet battle dungeon. Now of course, the pets I used are not the only ones that you can use, it's just what got me through there easier. So if you had other teams, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then you can leave a like on it. You can sub to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.